It's Friday, and you know what that means. At this time here on Morning News today, we recap some of the stories that made headlines this week, and today we are doing it with City Press editor, Feral Hafiji. Feral, thank you very much for coming in. I know today is like you know, your deadline with your newspaper coming up at the weekend, but we won't keep you for long. Okay, yeah, and what the deadline it is today? <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Okay, we've seen the gold mining strike dominating news uh, this yes. past week. And I mean, from where you sit, how have we covered the story uh, in the media generally? Um, I think we've done very well at the big picture. Um, so giving a fair voice to um, the miners, I enjoyed how Yusuf placed himself in the middle of the miners for most of the week. Mm. And I feel after reading the entire week, I know what the issues <coughs> are. Um, what I'd always like to see, and I hope we get it right on Sunday, is the life of a mine worker mm. and equally the headaches of a mining boss. Eh? Mm. So I'd like those kind of small pictures as yeah, well. And, and it has come at a time when there's been other labor unrest. I mean, mm. we've had the automotive industry going on strike. We saw the SAA technical workers going on strike. Mm. There's also been some uh, labor action in the construction uh, in the construction industry. And we saw... Previn Gordon, the minister, just before the G20 summit, said, guys, let's resolve these, uh, these strikes because uh, our exports, especially in the mining sector, are being affected and our economy is not in a good place at this stage. True, but I don't think anyone's listening, actually. Um, slap bang in the middle of the strike season. Every year we tend to, in the media, say, oh, it's the worst one yet, but actually the figures are not showing that. But it is getting pretty nasty. I think if you live in Joburg, yesterday we saw the city, uh, city power workers going on an unprotected strike over shifts. Um, taking us, I feel, into a different space now. Yeah. When we started this week, we started the week on the education front with the Walter Sisulu University closing down yes. and lots of students being affected there. And then we saw the KwaZulu Natal teachers doing a go slow and affecting the matrix preliminary exams. Yes. And I, I just found that story to be a little bit unfortunate at this time because it affects the lives of students. Their future is at stake. Um, I think that that's probably going to be one of our larger political challenges over the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. How do you stop our very strong union movements um, from standing in the way of our next generation getting a decent life? Mm -hmm. If you also saw um, the very same story, the metric markers refusing to go through a competency test so we make sure mm -hmm. we're getting out a very good class, surely that's going to be the big story, the ongoing narrative um, of a couple, mm -hmm. at least a, de a generation. Former President Nelson Mandela was discharged on Sunday, last yes. Sunday from hospital, began the week with a bit of good news. Back home, he spent the beginning of this week at, at home. I think that story was also well covered by the media. Well, yes, and quite a bit of drama because as the lights went out there, it's a blackout in Houghton where um, our founding father lives. And um, I thought your piece last night was gobsmacking in a way that we now have a generator brought in, guarded by people outside Nelson Mandela's house. They must keep it on. <laughs> yeah, we need, we, we, mm. we, still, we still need him. Outside South Africa, Syria has continued to dominate the yes. headlines as Barack Obama has been trying to get people to support a limited military strike. We've seen Germany, France behind him, but mm. Russia and China saying, don't do it. Mm. On the ground in America, some citizens are saying we are tired of attacking other mm. countries. And I think in South Africa, I don't know how we've seen this because President Zuma also expressed his views that only through the United Nations mm. we should be acting. I think a, a very good position by, um, by our country, saying it has to be part of a multilateral action, many steps beforehand. I was reading earlier that Vladimir Putin um, making very senior, serious allegations against uh, John Kerry. So this is certainly splintering the world, but still it's those images of babies swathed in blankets, people who were died or were dying in those attacks. That certainly um, we need answers to. Okay. Well, let's take a look about the weekend that's yes. coming up. I'm very interested to know what is the City Press going to be sharing with its readers on Sunday? I'm always torn between my absolute hard news hat and then knowing that it's a Sunday and people want to chill. So we have got things like, why are we so fat? We're apparently really fat and unhealthy. Oh, I, I, are you, you tapping into that? this uh, idea by the government yes. to ban yes. advertising of, of junk food? I, well, we're going to look at that a lot this week. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we're going to show you what's the best house um, in South Africa, the awards are this weekend. And then, yes. Sorry, the best house yes. or the most expensive house? I think they're the one and the same thing <laughs> <laughs> from what I've read so okay, far, but it good. looks okay. pretty beautiful. Okay. And then, of course, we are going to do heartbreaking news as well. And as I go back to work now, we're going to be thinking quite deeply about how we cover the strikes this okay. week. Well, thank you very much, Fela. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, Dan. that's City Press editor Feriel Hafiji. News that moves. ENCA.com.